Okay, our next uh, speaker is Mike Peasland, who's the Chief Executive Officer for Construction Services for UK Balfour Beatty. <clears throat> Mike joined Balfour Beatty in the 1970s, so he's very familiar with how the organisation ticks, and he describes himself as a board sponsor for sustainability and around 10% of his time being devoted to it. Um, he sees his role as fast-tracking sustainability, and he's clearly put a lot of effort into getting it integrated in, inside his organisation, which I'm sure he will tell you about now. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, I think my biggest challenge of the night is giving you a flavour of what we've been doing the last three years uh, in six minutes, but I, I will do my uh, very best. Um, I really want to give you a flavour of what, what we have done because in that way you'll understand how we've got to the structure we've got to uh, and how we've developed the sustainability uh, roadmap uh, for Balfour Beatty. It all started uh, back in 2008 uh, and bearing in mind, uh, as uh, Jim was saying, I've been around actually in Balfour Beatty since 1970. I was only 12 when I started, so, you know, work that one out. Um, in 2008, when we got this um, tender in from DEFRA, and uh, it was uh, a bid that was going to be uh, developed by the, uh, the group, um, our FM business, our construction business, our design business. Um, and in this bid, there was a section about this thick on our approach to sustainability. And there was a huge aha moment as to say, what the heck are we going to do with this? Um, as it turned out, we managed to you know, manfully get through this. We actually burnt off one or two of the opposition that we thought would really be good on this, on this subject. Um, and we ended up in second place. But it was a real wake-up call to say, as Balfour Beatty Group, uh, we weren't focused on sustainability, um, we weren't joined up across the business, and we had no clear strategy. So uh, the next uh, thing that happened was Ian Terrell, the chief executive of Balfour Beatty, um, came along, knocked on my door and said, Mike, you know, you're only running the construction business in the UK. I think you've got plenty of time to go and run the sustainability strategy for Balfour Beatty worldwide. So, you know, you can imagine uh, where I was starting from. Um, I was also quite, quite uh, helpful that um, the head of environment uh, had just been appointed about the day before, which was Jonathan Garrett, who's sitting at the back there. Um, so him and I were both catapulted into this, how do we develop um, a global sustainability uh, agenda uh, for Balfour Beatty? One of my first tasks, I reckon, uh, was when I had to first meet the, the board. 12, 12 um, directors, six non-execs, um, six executive directors. How was I going to explain what it, what it was I was going to do? And my first th uh, issue was, well, I'm not going to tell them and give them some tree-hugging agenda because they're just not going to be listening. I'm going to have to give them something that is about the sustainability of Balfour Beatty. This was coming approaching 2009. We've been around 100 years. How do we sustain Balfour Beatty for the next 100 years? So that was the uh, sort of the catalyst to capture um, their uh, imagination about what we needed to do. Um, it, it was really about the profitable uh, market side of this. How do we... How do we see this going forward? We could see societal expectation was taking us in this direction. We could see that customers were wanting us to go in this direction. And we could see that in terms of legislation, tax, landfill tax, CRC was all coming upon us. And there was a way here that we could, by developing the strategy, I could see it as a differentiator, a differentiator in our business, the way we could differentiate ourselves from the opposition and the way that we could actually create some work-winning strategies. So we set out in September 2009. Um, um, I led that with Jonathan. Jonathan is the practitioner expert, uh, and me really as the knowledge of the board, how we would get by this with the board, what would, what would work, what wouldn't work, um, and also the knowledge of people across the business and how to extract the, the best people to form a sustainability working group to develop this. Um, interestingly, uh, we're talking about Forum for the Future. We brought them in uh, as a facilitator to help us um, on this agenda. And, and between um, about September 08 to about March uh, 09, we developed our roadmap, our 2020 vision. Um, it was intensive, but one of the things that they said was that having a board member sitting on that group to actually develop it meant that the decision making was much faster. Um, I could just make a decision on the spot and say, that's fine, let's do that. Or I could say, let's do that, I'll get the board approval because I know it will be okay. Or alternative, it was, yeah, 
uh, you know, we'll, I'll get that at the next board meeting, but at least it was you know, filtering that to make sure that we had a, a fast track through that. What they were saying was when there was no board member on that group, then it had to wait to the next board meeting for approval and months went by. So that's how we managed to actually achieve that um, in, in, a, in, in six months. Um, of course, you know, one of the, one of the issues is, was this, this is the right thing to do, but I have to say that wasn't at the top of the agenda. The top of the agenda was sustaining the business, you know, for the, for the next um, 100 years. So, um, one of the other interesting um, issues was, again, has just been mentioned, uh, and we haven't coordinated this at all, but it was about what was, what was it we wanted to, to, to see beyond the work winning, which was the strategy. Uh, to get the board engaged, and that was embedding. It was about embedding this across the whole group, and our strapline is collective responsibility. It's not only my responsibility, it's not only my responsibility to the chief exec, it's everybody in the whole business's responsibility because they can all play a part. So that is the strapline for our agenda as collective responsibility. How do we embed it? Um, well, we delivered roadshows across the, the world from um, about uh, July 09 into early 10, um, actually delivering the strategy to each of the key business members of each of 27 operating companies around the world um, and delivered that to them. And then on the back of that, we've actually developed an e-learning program. And that e-learning program is for every single person in the group, not to make them a sustainability expert, uh, but to give them an understanding of what our approach is to sustainability, how they can articulate it, and when the customer comes to their project, their site, then they can actually articulate to the customer what our approach to sustainability is in their way. Um, and that's pretty powerful, because more and more, uh, with, when we're looking at bids, it's not the exam question of answering it, it's the verification, and that verification tends to come from customers visiting our projects and actually interrogating or at least asking questions uh, uh, of our people. Um, it's the other issue on the, on the work winning agenda is it's different for different customers. Um, we're talking about sustainability being the true alignment between our economics and social and environmental issues, but for different customers it does mean different things. It isn't always true alignment. In the BSF programme, uh, Building Schools for the Future, it was very much about employment, apprenticeships and local employment. Um, when we were talking to um, the affordable housing sector, it's all about community engagement. But when you're talking to the big corporates, it's more about environmental. So again, there's different nuances, different um, sort of emphasis um, on which part of sustainability we're talking about. But for our um, issue, we are trying to influence them that the true alignment is where they will get benefit um, and we will influence them as, as a key mover um, in construction uh, uh, in the world. Um, how, do we, how do we make it work? We have uh, action plans across the business. Um, we, I report to the Business Practices Committee on a six monthly basis um, and we report on our performance, on the review uh, and how it all works. So it's, it's me to the Chief Executive to the Business Practices Committee. No CSO, um, don't think we need that role but we do have a head of sustainability but it's a board, uh, I'm able to report and articulate to the board, but also have influence over other parts of the business, more so than perhaps maybe a CSO would. Thank you.